Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim <laughs> A simple for. Ow, mau, ow, mau, ow, mau. Sogbo lisa, sogbo lisa, sogbo lisa. Adanu wato, a simple for. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the heathen, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the love of the Lord, and in this Lord I see I did take sunrise and sundown. Him, him I go there like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bring out fat fruit in his season. Him lip never I go wither, and whatsoever him do shall prosper. Yay! The heathen them now they saw them there like a chaff with the wind driven away. Therefore the heathen them never go turn from judgment and the sin among them in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord God Jah loved the way of the righteous and the way of the sin among them. Always and always I go perish. Let the people of the Most High God say, Joe! This is the black pot, aka Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. And my name. Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And the black pot is so significant to us as a people. Listen, when the black pot sits on the fire, it's time for the family to unite and partake in the holy sacrament of nourishment. When the black pot is on fire, we know it's time to enjoy ourselves. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shodomo. And listen. The black pot has so many different ingredients going into that pot. Some are yellow, some are blue, some are green, some even are pink. But they all put aside their differences. Some are tall, some are short, some smell good, some smell foul. But when they come together, they produce one homogeneous product known as food for our own nourishment, not even for their own sake. They sacrifice themselves and be subjected to a certain amount of heat. That is symbolical of us as a people. Listen, the black pot represents the continent of Africa. The ingredients in the black pot represent us. We all might put aside all our differences, come together in the black pot and produce one homogeneous product known as development for our people, our continent, our land. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. We are live on Pan-African TV. We are also live on, oh, Black Empire TV, our own TV. And of course, we are loud on Ghana Web TV via the power of satellite. We are heard and seen all over the continent of Africa and beyond. We are the champions of Pan Africanism on TV. Pan African TV. And my name, Black Rasta. Now let's keep it rolling. Watch this. What is the very first story we have today? Look at it. And remember, in this segment, we normally don't criticize. But if we must criticize, we'll only just criticize to build and not to destroy. Our numbers are scrolling on your screens. Pick up your numbers and do business with us. What do you want us to advertise on our show? It will be heard by everybody. Your business will thrive. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushodomo. Watch this. What does it say? Ben Kumhini calls powerless Ochihini out this is the man lying down there 
all bald headed, wearing a watch, traditionally lying in front of the Ochehine. Why did he do this? Ochehine himself told him, Listen, I cannot forgive you. You are banished. Ochehine banished him because he was involved in illegal mining, Galamse. And as it stands right now, the Ghana Water Company decided to close some of its outfits right there in the area there. And therefore, the people in the area have water crisis. Why? Because the turbidity level of the water in the area of this chief has gone so high. And now they are struggling to get clean water to drink all because of their own doing illegal mining, polluting the water, and destroying the environment. Now, brother, my sister, look at the headline. Ochihine does, doesn't have power to destroy me. Asaman Tamfo, Ben Kumhine, the man you saw lying down on the floor. Come, let us read this and enlarge it for me so I can read it properly. Watch it. Hi, what does it say? Kwame Dakwa has refuted reports of his disturbance by Ochehene or Sajifu Amwetia of a repayment for his alleged involvement in illegal mining activities. In an interview on Eyewitness News, Dan uh, Oforiata, the state secretary for the Achim Ebuakwa state, said Ochehene gave the ruling after residents of uh, the Asaman Tampo community lodged a complaint with the Chibi uh, traditional area of the invasion of the forest in the area, which was found to have been facilitated by the Benkumini. State Secretary Oforiata said the traditional council summoned and confronted the chief of Asaman Tamfo, Osaberi Makwami Ko II, and the Benkumini Nana Kwame Dakwa, and they pleaded with Ochihini to help them fight the menace because they lacked the needed logistics to do so. Only to realize that Ben Kumhini was neck deep in the destruction. He continued to explain that the plea of the Asaman Tanfu chief and the Ben Kumhini was taken in good faith. And an anti Galamse tax force was dispatched to the area. And an excavator was seized. And a confrontation ensued only for the Ben Kumhini to surprisingly organize a press conference challenging the authority of the tax force. About a thousand citizens of Asamain Tanfo had brought a petition before the Osajifu Amwetia of Repeni, accusing certain people, including the Benkumini of uh, Asamain Tanfo, of complexity in the Galamse operations that were going on there. The evidence was put before them. And the Benkumhini admitted that he was part of the Galamse operations in Asaman Tampo. And Osajifo has stated clearly that any chief found culpable in Galamse operations has himself to blame. So straight away, there was the pouring of libation and slaughtering of a sheep to symbolize his, that's the Benkumhini's, official distillment as a chief. But speaking to Umar Rusanda Amadou on point blank. On eyewitness news, Ben Kumhini, Nana Kwame Dakwa said, I have not been disturbed. It is false propaganda by the state secretary and the Ochinhini himself. I didn't swear an oath to the Ochinhini. I swear I swore an oath to Osabari Makofi the II. So until my chief says he doesn't need me, I am still a chief. Bekumini Nana Kwame Dakwa explained that Ochehini breached the traditional protocols, forging the Asamain Tanfo chief, in fact, to distool him. And I think that where they're supposed to be forcing, distool him, and that until the Asamain chief distools him, he will continue to perform the duties of a Benkumhini of the area. I do consider myself a substantive Benkumhini of Asamain Tanfo. Tradition must be respected, and so if my chief, Asamain Tanfo Osabarima Kwame Ko II, removes me, 
I will respect this decision and comply accordingly. And I will never challenge him. I am not a galamsea. And I've never engaged myself in galamsea activities. And he or she, he knows. He invited me to speak on galamsea, siphoning the community's money. And when I got there, he threw the allegation of me organizing a press conference, but refused to touch on the basis of the press conference, which is the indiscriminate shooting in the town by his tax force. Nana Kwame Dankwa continued to absolve himself of the accusations. Wow. Well, my brother, my sister, there's obviously something terrible happening over there. The Ochihini says that you are involved in Galamsey and that a tax force reported that you were part of the Galamseyers. An excavator was seized. Now you came out challenging their authority to come to the area and enforce the anti galamsey rules. Now you appeared before Osajifu Amwa Oforipenyi Amwetia. And what happened? You confessed, according to them, that you confessed. You were on tape to have confessed. You lay down flat on your belly like a snake on heat. And you confessed and begged for mercy. Now that you've been kicked out, there is a certain kind of propaganda you are spreading. Yes, Ochihini might not be the best chiefs we have in Ghana. He himself was allegedly involved in this Galamsey thing. And he came out to point blank, tell the whole Ghana, that if developmental activities were not brought into his area, he would ask his youth to continue Galamsey. At a point, he was known as the king of Galamsey. Now that they are not getting clean water to drink, they've all come back to their senses. Some of the chiefs, they have no common sense. Ochehine can tell his people that until developed mental uh, 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 frameworks come onto my land, you guys will continue Galamsey. And I sit back and I ask myself, does the chief know what he's doing to his people? You are destroying the land that is supposed to be for the next generation. Some people are so greedy. People coming from the area, anybody you ask, they pinpoint and finger Ochehine as the king of Galamsey. Today, if the man wants to become a new leaf and act accordingly, and he decides to kick you out, then you go around disrespecting his authority. It's Ochiini who caused it. He disrespected himself, jumped into the Galamse Mili, and was with them. So they had no respect for him. So now he is distooling people and they are refusing to be distooled. But as for Ben Kumhini, he's one of the most arrogant sub chiefs I can think of. No brains. This is a man, my brother, my sister from what I am seeing and reading, has no respect for the next generation. These are people, my brother, my sister, who should be taken to Ukraine for Russia to bomb them night and day. These are the people. I hate it when people do not have respect for the next generation. Why must people come and beg you to respect your land? Why must somebody come and beg you eh, to treat the next generation right? And some people are even proud. They video themselves and get in Galamse. And then they spread the photos and videos around saying that nobody can catch us. We are doing it. It's like you are hiding in your room, setting your room on fire. And you video yourself and say, I'm setting my room on fire. But nobody will see this. When the house catches fire, you will turn into ashes. But we don't seem to see it. What kind of human beings are we? Ochihini must command respect. Respect doesn't come from slangs. Respect is commanded. A leader must come out and show that he's a sacrificial lamb. A leader must think about his people. A leader must think about the next generation. A leader must be surrounded with visionaries. 
if the leader himself is not a visionary, he must be able to find visionaries who would surround him. My brother, my sister, I am so sad that the Ochihini has reduced himself to this level where his sub-chiefs can talk in his face like this. If this was the Christian church, I will ask him to go for a rebaptism. This time round, not in River Pra or River Obrim, go to River Jordan. Your baptism must be made of acid. They should baptize you in acid. I'm sad. I love and respect traditional authority. But when I see our chiefs behaving like toddlers, it hurts me, my brother. I am truly, truly sad. Where is the fighting spirit? All the great people who fought for our land, where are they? So they did all this. Shed blood and sweat. Only for our kingsmen to disrespect this. It hurts me. As for Ben Kumihini, the least said about you, the better. When you were lying down on your belly like a snake in labor, you didn't have a problem with that. Why were you lying down there? What was it for? Were you not apologizing? Do they not have you on tape apologizing? All of a sudden, you don't owe him any apology. He is not in your jurisdiction. And he is blah, blah. These are the people who are the cousins and uncles of Satan. When you pray and say, oh, guide me from Satan. These are the children of Satan. If you destroy your land, the Quran says you are Satan. The Hadith says you are Satan. The Bible says that you are Satan. That shit away, brethren. And come. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonamo, where we speak truth to power. Next thing on the agenda, what does it say? It says what? Gang out against Anas. Who is this Anas at all? Oh, this guy. I know him. Anas Armiyao Anas. All right. He's an investigative journalist. And he's done a lot of work. That actually opened our eyes to so many dangerous demons in our land. This was the guy who got Kwesi Nyantechi suspended and backbenched. Kwesi Nyantechi was paraded around as an honest man who was doing his work well. Until we saw him in Dubai, invited by this ace investigative journalist. And when he saw money, he lost his senses. That documentary was called Number 12 and started talking like a camel on heat and then boom when his wife one of his wives later saw that documentary she said ah when i saw my husband in that tape talking i knew that it wasn't him something must be wrong somewhere yes because things people are not honest they don't tell you the truth they hide some part of them and when that part starts showing hey trouble anas expose this person and as the documentaries that unveiled some cults killing albinos and babies and so on and so forth. We saw documentaries, my brother, my sister, where referees took bribes and were all kicked out. And as did it. It came to a time people in Ghana trusted Anas more than even the Ghana police. True? If you put Ghana police here, and put Anas here, people will choose Anas. I'm so happy that the Ghana police is rising gradually into its echelons of glory. The police is a glorious service. I love and respect the police like something. My house is a police house. My grandfather was a policeman. He would have liked it that I would become police. But because of my locks, they would never take me as police. See? And I don't really like to match this matching thing. I just asked myself, what is this? Who are you marching for? What is that? And people parade and then they are marching, swinging their arms. And, what is this? What is it for? I asked, what is it for? Then they stand and, they, you know, what is it for? What is the meaning? My brother, my sister, 
I never became a policeman. But my siblings and some other people in my family became police. My grandfather was one of the best Gold Coast policemen. So I love the police. Now the police is beginning to rise to that level of glory. If I was president of this, this country called Ghana, ah, police would be, Ghana police would be the best in the world. I'm telling you. My brother, I will sack all black policemen and leave only four police in Ghana. It's better to have quality than to have quantity. And I'll pay them well. We all corrupt police will go home. Even if you are left with four, we will pay them so well. Before you join the police service, there's a house waiting for you. For you and your family. Your salary is good because you are risking your life. You are facing the powder whilst ladies are powdering their face. Two different things. One faces the powder, the other one powders the face. We shouldn't both take the same salary. The risk is different. True? My brother, my sister, there's a gang out against Anas. Remember when Nana Kufu Ado was coming into power, he said he would use the Anas principle. Today, people who said, yeah, 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 the Anas principle was good. Hey, Nana Ado has spoken sense. His own people are fighting on us. Why? Watch this. We will continue to use an us principle to fight graft crime. And this is tiger eye talking. He says what? An us army Anas has stated a major goal. His most recent, his most recent investigative documentary dubbed Kalamse Economy Achieved. What is it he said? Watch it. The investigative journalist said the film was to put together, was put together to expose the pervasive rot that is affecting the economy and investor confidence in Ghana. He was reacting to recent allegations against his person as contained in a viral video which content he described as mud slinging and lies being peddled by detractors. His views were contained in a November 25 press release, which read in part a video made up of re rehashed allegations from 2018 have, has been circulating. Mm -hmm has been circulated on social media networks and other uh, messaging platforms. The statement went on to respond to specific individuals who appear in the said video addressing specifically what they are on record to have said of Anas and of his outfit, Tiger Eye Private Investigations. Mm -mm -mm. Among others, Anas responded to claims by a sin central lawmaker, Kennedy Ejapon, wife of the former uh, Ghana Football Association GFA president and journalist Justice Kweku Anan, a dismissed employee of the Japan. We challenge anyone with evidence of crime against Anas Armiyao Anas to, without hesitation, make some of the same available to the relevant uh, state authorities. The statement stressed. It concluded by emphasizing that Tiger Eye will continue along the path of using um, sting operations to expose rot in the society. Tiger IPI remains unwavering in its uh, commitment to fight graft and crimes using uh, sting operations. That's the Anas principle. And absolutely nothing, be they threats or baggage of spurious allegations will stop us from holding duty bearers accountable in the interest of God and country. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, that's it away. That's what I'm asking. So if you have evidence, bring it out. So my talking, no evidence. Oh, and that's, it's extorting money from people. What is your evidence? Do you have him on tape? Have you ever recorded him? Can you make that available? 
is just hot air. The man is giving you evidence as to who he thinks is corrupt or not. He doesn't have the power to arrest anybody. He gives that out to the authorities. They also investigate and hold people down. What is his crime? But Martin Amidu, the talkative letter writer, is still here. The man who was given the opportunity to be the very first special prosecutor. He did nothing. He only made noise and noise and noise. Shouting and writing letters. My brother, my sister, this man is a very, 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 very shameful man. I'm telling you that. Look, we all had so much trust in this guy. He came in. Oh, former uh, 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 presidential aspirant. In fact, of course, uh, 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 vice presidential aspirant. He went all the way to becoming who and who and who and who. This man is a legal brain. When he was coming into office, we all said hallelujah. Nobody can buy this guy. He came in and stayed in office and did absolutely nothing. And he's still talking. People like this are good for the circus, where they can make noise and make people laugh. My brother, my sister, this is not a time to joke. This is not a time to be diplomatic. It's a time to speak truth to power. If somebody's a fool, tell him he's a fool. If he's wise, tell him he's wise. If he's an idiot, tell him he's an idiot. If he's great, tell him he's great. There's no need to say, oh, you are a little idiotic, but you are great and you are so beautiful yet ugly. What are you saying? Anas released in 2018 expose in 2022, naive, untenable, spurious, and should be told to the Marines. I mean, he's full of words. Words, Latin words, Greek words. He will bring all of them to bamboozle people. This man is said an old time letter writer. Those people who sit down with that typewriter that makes no ta 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 the alliteration that goes with the Anas. So, Anas, 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 Armiyao, Anas, Anas, Anas. Over their latest Galamse expose, which has led to the dismissal of Charles Edubwain, a former minister of state at the finance ministry. Come! He says what? The former attorney general and minister of justice under the NDC regime indicated that the reasons the team gave for not releasing the documentary in 2018 were untenable. Mr. Hamidu said, such excuses could only be told to the Marines and the special pretenders, I, I suppose. It emerged that the recent documentary by Anas and his team was stolen. And the team only managed to retrieve a copy. But Martin Hamidu says, the reasons are spurious and naive. The excuse they gave us that Kennedy Japan had intercepted the videotape on the 8th of February 2018, suspected corruption by Edu, Edu Bwain, is spurious, naive, and untenable uh, to be told only to the Marines. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. In this information, uh, 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 tech, in this information technologic and communications age, no experience covert investigation agents such as Anas, Armia, Anas, and Tiger IPI would put all his eggs in one basket by having one original video uh, uh, record after the 8th February 2018 event without spiriting a backup or backups into the cloud. That's it away. This man is not serious. That's all. Listen, you are not an investigative journalist. You are supposed to be a lawyer who people respected in the past. You have lost it. If you want to gain back that respect, it is not this way. I am so angry with you because you let me down. When they chose you, I went to your village. We danced with the chief and everybody. Only for you to come and, and 
play like Mr. Bean. You will shut up and keep quiet and stay there. What Anas has done, you haven't done a quarter of that in terms of revealing crime and corruption. That was why you were put there. You should have worked hand in hand with Anas. If you had anything to iron out with him, the rough edges, if you wanted to smoothen those things out. That was the time you should have done that. But you ran out of office like a frunk in labor. Hot daylight, you ran out. What are you talking about? Hear me now. Listen. Hey, 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 hey. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Investigative journalism is not a joke. Your life is on the line. You are on the run. You have no time to think about a copy. Ha! Hey! People are running after you. Somebody just realized that, hey, I have messed up. You think that he's going to leave you? When are you going to be able to keep a copy? Is that the only reason? He didn't bring it in 2008. You don't know. You're a joker. Hear me now. Hear me. Hey, let's be serious. Now the guy that Anas got. Remember Anas most of the time doesn't go on the field himself. He sends boys. One of his boys who went for the original recording could have decided that, hey, this is a big fish. How much is Anas going to pay me? One of the dirty-minded boys who do not think about the nation as a whole, but their own uh, pockets, parochial pockets. There's a guy who is after Anas. I can sell this original tape to him without making it get to Anas. And he did it. Probably. And boom, it got into the hands of Anas's enemy. And he boasted all over the place that he had it and no other person had it. Now this same guy was smart enough, in fact not smart, sly, to make a copy. Before releasing it to this guy. And Kennedy Japan probably felt that, yeah, Alpha and Omega paid 40,000 American dollars for that expose. And went flaunting his feathers like a peacock that has just fallen from mass, ready to mate and lay eggs. Hallelujah. Jesus. After a while, this guy in exile decides to call Anas and say, listen, I messed up. Can you forgive me? Anas says, where is the tape? I will give it to you on condition that you forgive me. I said, I don't want to forgive you on conditionalities. Can you bring back the tape? Okay, boss, I'll send it. I'll send you the tape. But uh, uh, please, I beg you, make sure that you don't say that I brought it because the deal was that this was the only tape. And Anas gets it after four years and decides to release it. A former special pretender says that in this technological, eventual, parochial competitors that came around from the sky that paraded into a bonglogos taratus. Confuse everybody and we are all here. <laughs> The time for this joke is over. Anas is doing his work. If you're a lawyer, stay there. If you're a letter writer, continue writing to bamboozle people. Hey, this is the black pot. Come! When we return, we shall talk some more. In the interim, I have a quote for you. Hey! Why <laughs> Blackpot, aka Kukushuno, where we speak truth to power. Yes, you like you like the quote, right, my brother? Who freed your power? If our country must work, we must speak truth to power. Unkuma said one thing, and if you are an Unkumaist, 
Show your hand. Let's see you by hand. Thank you. Nkrumah said, and I keep quoting this, the best way to fight corruption is to build a strong public opinion against it. What Anas is doing is building a strong public opinion. Name, shame, and jail the bad guys. Name, shame, and jail the bad guys. I taught him a little bit of alliteration, so he's put them into use. Name, shame, and jail the bad guys. That's what Anas is doing. He had a tape from 2018. He didn't show it. Crime has no expiry date. How about if Anas had said, we were still editing it. We were still doing some work on it. What would you say? What would you say? My brother, don't let us give credence to rot and organized crime. I hear Charles a Dubuahin guy also saying that, oh, he was, somebody tried to entrap him. You were told earlier that that was the only tape and that they had paid for it, $40,000. It will never come out and you are happy. Probably that Sunday you went to church and gave money. Hallelujah. Rot stolen money. All of you will be exposed one after the other. All the thieves that are hiding behind the curtains. May you all be uprooted and exposed. Come! Next thing. What does it say? Watch it. Burkina Faso tumbling further down in poverty. Oh, I love this country. Burkina Faso means land of the upright. In fact, Burkina Bays are Ghanaians. In fact, they are the Gombes. Burkina Bays came from one founder. And that was Yeninga. He was, she was a Dagomba queen. Who ran for her, from her father. All because of a male suitor. And she found herself there. She had a son called Widraogo. Together, they founded the whole of Burkina Faso. The Mosi. They are the majority. Of course, we have some other ethnic groups there, like the Dagabas, the Sisales. I went to Burkina Faso and people were speaking Sisale to me. I was shocked for the very first time. What the, wow! Yes! They speak Dagati as well. Yes, they speak Dagari. Look at their flag. Beautiful, isn't it? There's red, there's yellow. And there's green. The only thing that is not there is the black in the Ghana flag. Listen. The Mogonaba comes all the way to Nalergu and some other such places every few years for some rituals to trace their ancestry. So it's one people. When I see people fight some other people, I get hurt. Somebody asks me, why do you make a song about Uganda? Why do you make a song about Cameroon when you live in Ghana? I'm like, do you know your history? Do you know your history? I remember when I first met Barack Obama. People said, well, why didn't you make a song about, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, was the Rawlings? Or I said, are you serious? Do you know what it means to say inspiration? You just get up and make a song because you want to make a song. You must have an inspiration. Something must inspire you and direct you towards a certain line. Anyway. Burkina Faso is one such poor country. Mosquitoes in Burkina Faso are as fat as butterflies. When I went to Burkina Faso, Wagadugu, I couldn't find one brand new car. So dry, Sahel. It's a landlocked country. But Burkina Faso is a beautiful country. You know why? The people are warm. Very warm. You know what it means to say warm? Number two, they have vegetables there like mad. And as a vegetarian, that is my comfort zone. So warm. 
and hospitable amidst the poverty. They are making things happen. But look at what Royal Test has just put out. Burkina Faso's vanishing gold boom puts livelihoods at risk. What is he talking about? Ouagadougou, November 28, Reuters says one, a gold mining boom in Burkina Faso over the last decade propelled uh, Bukhari Diallo from being a vendor on the market stall to running a meat business supplying a mine near Uiguya, his hometown in the north of the country. But as the West African country loses territory to Islamist militants and lurches from coup to coup, threatening to turn the boom into dust, bust, Diallo is concerned he will be unable to retain all of his 10 employees. Things are getting tight. Diallo, 42, told writers by phone. If the mine doesn't start up again in December, I will have to let some people go. Karma. Mine. Which, the Karma mine, which Diallo supplies, was closed in June after a militant attack that left one worker and one soldier dead. Acquired by Burkina-based firm Nere Mining from uh, Endeavor Mining. That's EDV in March. Karma is one of at least four gold mines that halted production this year because of security risks. Russia's Nor Gold in April stopped mining in Tapaco, saying the lives of its staff were in danger. The economy is also at risk. Gold is Burkina Faso's main export, accounting for 37% of total exports in 2020. And mining is a leading source of jobs. For each person directly employed by a miner, there are three or four contractor and services workers. The National Association of Mining Contractors estimates. The Allos business which had revenues of 100 million sefer francs, that's about $151,399, hmm. in 2019 has been making barely 4 million sefer francs a month since the karma mine shut, he said. The conflict has also stoked inflation, making livestock more expensive. Production sinks. The decline in Diallo's fortunes is reflected at the national level. At current rates, Burkina Faso is set to produce 13% less gold this year than in 2021, in part because of mine closures. Government statistics show that's it away. And come. This is Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is in Mori, what you call Mosi, and it means land of the upright. Listen, the name of their country changed from the upper Volta or O Volta in French, and it's now Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. Some people say Burkina. Is Burkina? Burkina Faso. It means the land of the upright. Morally upright, physically upright, spiritually upright. But today, can you call it Burkina Faso? When you go into that country, it's all poverty, right from when you enter. Corruption at its peak. And to make it worse, Islamist attacks. I don't want to call it Islamist attacks. I want to call that terrorism. We have seen videos of women and children slaughtered like dogs. Whilst people are shouting, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Slaughtering human beings like goats. We have seen, my brother, my sister, how bombs exploded in so many areas in Burkina Faso. 
killing many. Oh my God. Burkina. When I went to Burkina Faso, find a photograph of me and the Mogonaba in Burkina Faso. Right? And put it up. Me and the Mogonaba. Me and the king of Burkina Faso. You find a photograph there and put it up. When I was in Burkina Faso, I went all the way to the palace of the Mogonaba. Mogonaba is spelled M O G O. Mogo Naba is N double A B A. That's the king of the Moshes. I went there and I greeted him. And he asked me, What message do you have? I said, I've come home. I've come to greet you. I am coming from this ethnicity. I've come to greet you. And I've come to thank you for the peace that is reigning in this area. Barely a few months after I left, that peace, oh Jesus have mercy. Thank you for this photograph. Oh Jesus. You see it there? You see me and my soldiers at the back there? Oh my God. Are you able to show the faces of my soldiers? All right. So that's me and Mogonaba. He's still Mogonaba. Every, every week, he chooses one day to sit on his throne. And people all over Burkina Faso come and talk to him about the nation. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. He sits. It's a ritual. Everyone who wants to talk to him will come. You book with the secretary. And then you come and talk to him in public. No secret. This is what I want to do. This is what is happening in our area. That he's not the president there. But he's more powerful than the president and the head of state. Mogonaba, I come to you again. Oh my God. Can you see me there? Oh my God. That's the palace of the Mogonaba. Everyone seated in the yard. Big yard. Look at me. Was I wearing shoes? No, sir. No shoe. Did you see shoes there? Shoes there. There are shoes there, right? That means he gave me a spiritual, special privilege. He said, come. Talk to him. It was so beautiful. I come to you again and ask you, to do all you can. The Mosi people are warriors. Send the warriors out if the state has failed. And deal with the terrorism. Mogonaba can do this. Terrorism in Burkina Faso is killing businesses and spoiling everything there. I wish I could talk more. But it's bringing tears into my eyes because I love this country. I love this country. In fact... The first time I heard about something called three plus malaria was after I visited Burkina Faso. I came back and I was down with malaria. Treated and treated it wasn't going. When they tested my blood, they said, you are three plus malaria. You are a strong man. You would have died. Ah, but this three plus malaria, hardly do we have it in this part of, 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 of Ghana. Did you travel out? I said, yes, I went to Burkina Faso. That's where you got it. Because over there, when mosquitoes are flying, they are like bears, sparrows, big like that. And when they bite you, it's like they've used an axe on you. Bwah! With all this, if terrorism comes to art, then where are we going? But again, they have lived beyond the mosquitoes, lived beyond the poverty, and they are having fun because they are warm people. Hey! Whoa! Come on! Come on!
This is the Black Pot, aka Koko Shunam, where we speak truth to, to power. My name, Black Rasta. Please pick our number scrolling on the screen right now and do business with us. The more businesses grow in Africa, the more we become happy. Pick up our numbers. You can send us a WhatsApp call. Yes, do business with us, man. Yeah, let's advertise your business. It's going to be seen all over Africa. What business are you into? Are you producing shoes? Or are you producing bread? Or are you producing, you know, some drink? What are you into? Let's talk. Let's advertise your business. Let's watch it grow. Let's employ more people. Let's set our economy free. Oh, God. I can't wait to advertise you. Call. I'll be standing by to listen to you. This is the pot that is black. And my name is black too. Next thing. It says what? Watch it. It's rolling. Boom. Ghana wins in Oslo. Oslo is in Norway as a capital. What's the story? Oh, so this is the man. Ah. He's a very wonderful man. You know who he is, don't you? Yeah, he's a very wonderful man. It says Ghana wins appeal in Norway case. Come! The Oslo Court of Appeal has in a unanimous decision dismissed an appeal filed by uh, Jongsburu A.S., the sellers of a property identified by Ghana for use as a chancery building in Oslo, Norway. The court considered the appeal by Jongsburu uh, against the judgment of the Oslo District Court that's the High Court in December 2021 as uh, what? Uh, I can't see from here. And consequently dismissed it. Yes. Unmeritorious. I think that's the word there. As unmeritorious and consequently dismissed it. Awarding damages and procedural cost in favor of God. Composed of three judges of appeal. Paul Martin Andreasin, Irene Song, and Rolf uh, Trihus. The appellant court in a judgment dated November 22, 2022 fully acquitted Ghana of all liabilities, stating a purchase agreement to which Ghana was a party could not be said to have been completed between the parties. The court awarded the sum of 1.5 million Norwegian krona, approximately $150,000, payable by the appellant to Ghana as procedural costs incurred before the court of appeal. It further ordered the appellant to pay Ghana 1 million Norwegian krona, approximately 100,000 American dollars as compensation for procedural costs at the High Court in 2018. These are the facts of the case. Ghana decided to establish an embassy in Norway for which Parliament approved a grant of funding as well as other missions around the world. A delegation of four Ghanaian officials was appointed to travel to Norway and carried out the necessary practical and administrative preparations for the establishment of the embassy. Among the preparations to be made was the acquisition of a chancery building, either by purchase or by lease. That means they rent or they, you know, buy it outright. The Ghanaian delegation identified a number of properties, including uh, Saints Gate 3 in Frogna in Oslo, the property the subject matter of the litigation in the District Court of Norway. For legal assistance, Ghana hired a lawyer, Mikkel Vesil, from the law firm of Selma. On November 22, 2028, Ghana received an offer from Johnsboro to buy the property for 100 million Norwegian krona with a deadline of seven days. Listen to that. That's important. On November 22, 2028, 2018, I beg your pardon, Ghana received an offer from John Spru, the owners of the property, to buy 
the property for 100 million Norwegian kroner with a deadline of seven days. Ghana's charge that fell. Regina appear. Some responded to Johnsborough's offer in the terms accepting the offer on behalf of the government, but with conditions. It was a condition for the acceptance of the offer and the final contract that the building was without significant defects and that the renovation work was completed and performed in a satisfactory manner. Ghana later pulled out of the transaction. John's Bury sued the company of Ghana and the government of Ghana in the Oslo District Court claiming sums totaling about 78 million Norwegian krona for breach of contract, loss of profits, interest and cost of litigation. Dash it away. So it's simple. Ghana wanted to put up an embassy. All the big English you had there. They went all the way to Oslo. Right there. A delegation of four men went there, checked out some buildings and chose one. And then decided that they would be in there. Now, there was a way they could either buy it or rent it. In other words, lease. And then they had a certain kind of proposal or offer. Oh, you can buy it for this amount. The owners wanted to sell it to Ghana. And Ghana said, okay, we really would want to buy it within seven days. If only the building is without defects. If there are no cracks here, if the roof is not leaking, and this is not happening here, and this is not happening here, this is not happening here, we accept that. It's a condition. Then after four, five, six days, Ghana decides that, Charlie, we don't want that building again. And then they say, you have deceived us. You have deceived us. They went to court and Ghana won. Listen. Listen, listen. Do you know what is called? What's that thing called? Oh my God. Judgment debt. Ghana paid so much judgment debt in the past. We all remember Wyoming. This was one of the judgment debts we're going to pay. Thankfully, we have escaped it. Thanks to all the wonderful lawyers who represented us. And thanks so much. But I would like to know, how much are they paying the lawyer in Norway for defending us? You will be shocked. The amount. This is a government that is so criminally corrupt that they can pay somebody to design a cathedral, an arm and a leg, when the country is almost falling apart out of sync with the economy. How much are they paying that lawyer? Can you put it out? Put it out. You put out how much they are going to pay Ghana. Right? As procedural whatever. How much are they paying the lawyer? Dash it away. Come with the next thing. And this is going to be brief. Very, very brief. Next thing. My brother, my sister, this is the black pot. A.K.A. Kukushunamo where we speak truth to power. It's all about our people, our continent, our land. This is the last story, last but one, penultimate story. It's going to be quick. It says one, Jordan are you, slews critics. Who's Jordan are you? That's him. There was a photograph of him. See if you can find, well, I leave it out. There was a photograph of him. Somebody held his pants and uh, something came out of his, uh, you know, his pants like uh, a gun. And the women were so excited. I don't know why when they see men, men's guns, they get so excited. The man is there to play football. He's not a soldier. You know, Ghanaians have criticized the IUs so much. Untenable criticisms. Who did the IU? Why should I use even start? to the point that spiritualists like Kwekubo and some have all, you know, meddled in this affair. Hey, their youth don't have to be playing at the same time or they will lose. Well, today the two of them played. No, no, no. Is, is it right? No, yesterday. Yes, they played. <laughs> yesterday they played. And what happened? Ghana won. The spiritualists will still come with a certain explanation. They had to slaughter a crow. In fact, they actually slaughtered a papu. That one, that went, the one with the long tongue and then the long beard. A papu with siata. Watch it. 
Jordan, are you trends for performance in Ghana's game against South Korea? Yesterday, I sat with some people to watch this thing. When Ayu started coming into the oh, I cry when you and then then they whoa, I cry when Obo Bolt is on by on by we. We didn't even hear Bolt look around. If you fool me, say ah, ready. When Ayu Jordan started pa 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 to pa pa to pa soldiers pa 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 first go pa. My brother, the least said about Ghanaian football fans, but it's all part of the game. But I want to believe that some people have some natural dislike. I won't use the word hatred. Dislike for some particular people. Is it that they are from the same father? Is that why? Look at how these boys struggle for this nation. The day went to play that time, he cracked his head, blood was flowing all over him. They tied his whole head. Are you able to find me that photo? Well, we're running out of time. I mean, you know, we leave it out. Kudus also did so well. My first boy is called Kudus. So anytime I see this guy, I get vim. Abdul Kudus. Kudus to the rescue. Ghana still vital World Cup win despite surrendering two goal lead against South Korea. This South Korea, especially that guy with the mask of Zoro. You know, see they uh, running like robots. Running, running. Ghana, Ghanaians are not used to that kind of game. I'm glad that they were able to bulldoze their way through. But look at the trends. He's actually trending. Kudus is number one there. Uruguay is next. Why are they talking Ghanaians talking about Uruguay? Got that guy with the teeth like those of a uh, a crocodile is going to be playing. You know that guy. <laughs> Guardians, Guardians don't like him. Look at this guy. He's trying to look for that guy's photograph. <laughs> Call him Suarez. Hey! This guy became a goalkeeper. Held the ball like this. They showed him a red card. And he was walking out, walking out. Red card, you have to walk out like how they showed somebody coach. <laughs> red card, Korean red card. Say, oh, Baka. You know what Baka means? Check it out in Korean. He told the referee, Baka. It's like how someone said, Ubanka. Shege wawa. Shege. Abimbaza. Shege. Hey! Congratulations to the Black Stars. Hey! Data Bank, what is happening? Data Bank. Oh, so you couldn't find a photo of that <laughs> guy with a teeth like a mad truck on the hill. Okay, Data Bank robbery. Robbery. A woman says she put her money at the, at the local branch of Data Bank. Boom. 10,000. Now she wanted her money. And they say, oh, because of the economic crunch and big English micro and microeconomics, macro and macro, and, uh, you know, uh, 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 demand and supply axis cross cut at the point of equilibrium that somersaulted into a big volcano that came down to a certain tsunami that finally counted into an earthquake and the whole country is in an exometric situation. The woman said, please, can you give me my money? He said, no, now we'll give you 8,000. She's lost her investment. Data bank, we think they happen. And when you read the story, say they had deducted some money from some people, and some people are calling this stealing and so on and so forth. My brethren, we'll find time and go deeper into it. They couldn't even handle data bank. Yet, they want to handle the whole nation. Come! My name is Black Rust, and I want to say thank you so much on behalf of my team here. We love you. This is Pan-African TV, Black Empire TV, and of course, Ghana Web TV. We love you. We love you. Congratulations to the Black Stars. Oh, you did what was supposed to be done, and we want to see a better game. Mm. Hey! Whoa! <laughs>